All right, what's on the bench? It's big. <laughs> it's really, really big. And it's really, really old. It's about 33 years old. So uh, any guesses? Uh, it's uh, pretty nondescript from the front. All right, so let's, uh, uh, it's heavy, it's heavy. Let's flip it around. And uh, it's got a handle, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's got some connectors and stuff. People, people may, may see it on the side here. It is a K-Pro. I've wanted a K-Pro for a while. It's been on my radar. I uh, finally got around to buying one. Price was right. Um, and uh, it's one of the later models. So let me flip it back here. Um, the guy shipped it in, the guy shipped it in the original box. <laughs> Not the greatest thing, no pat, no, no cushioning, but these things were built tough. So yeah, K-Pro, original box, I probably was his dad's and he was getting rid of some stuff. So it is the K-Pro 2X. It's the X version. Um, so there was the K-Pro 2 was the earlier one. The K-Pro 2X was a revamped one. There was a K-Pro 4 and then a K-Pro Roman numeral 4. Uh, this one came out at the same time as the, uh, the Roman numeral 4 and the 10. The X meant that it came with a whole bunch of software as well. It was like $1,600 back in 1983. A lot, a lot of money. But you got WordStar and you got a whole bunch of other programs and stuff. So, so that's, that's what's going on there. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's get rid of this. There's one more foot in the, uh, one more foot in the box. It looks like it broke off in shipping or got dented on shipping. Yeah, I might have gotten sheared off on shipping. Anyway, I can fix that. Uh, let me move around. Okay, if you haven't seen one of these, you flip these two latches out and boom, there was your keyboard. So it was the first, uh, the first luggable computer. All right, let's uh, change it around a bit here, make the lighting better. All right, here's the front, a really large display, which was really nice. I think it's a nine inch display. I don't know if it's green or yellow. They came in different two versions. I think this one's probably green. Um, it also came with half height drives, which was pretty modern in its day. And these are double density as well. So it's one of the later models. It's four, four megahertz. So it was a screamer too. Um, this one interesting has the reset button in front. I think that was probably a user uh, option. The user put that on the front, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so I say we uh, take a peek inside. All right, here we go. Uh, here's the front and it is a single board computer. So everything is on this one board. Uh, there is the Z80, uh, the boot ROM. Uh, there is the RAM. This is a 64K of RAM. Uh, there is uh, video graphics, which is over here. Uh, there's two serial ports. Um, and the serial ports are dual, so it's four serial ports. One serial port's used for the keyboard, and one serial port is on this connector, one serial port's on that connector, and one serial port goes to that thing, which is unusual for this particular model. That is the, the 300 baud built-in modem. So this has the modem built in. Usually you had to buy the four or the 10 in order to get the built in modem. But I guess later on in life, they started putting in the modems because everybody wanted one. Um, but that's kind of this side of the board here. Um, the battery needs to be replaced. Uh, there's a couple of capacitors here that need replacing. We'll check that 10 of them out, make sure he's okay. So, uh, let's see here. Let me swing around the other side. All right, um, I'm not sure about the fan. The fan, I think, was not on this particular model. 
It looked like maybe somebody added this. It's an Archer cooling fan and probably bought it at Radio Shack and did their own, uh, did their own uh, modification, uh, which was something recommended that uh, the thing did seem to heat up. Um, and so people did put fans in them. Uh, yeah, here's the floppy cable to five and a quarter floppies. Um, I know you can't see it, but I can see the power supply and it's got a big reefer cap that's cracked all to hell. So I'm not going to power it up. I don't want stink in the garage. So I'm going to have to replace that reefa. It has a whole bunch of other electrolytics in there. So I think after 33 years, we'll probably clean it up, put in new electrolytics. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, I think we'll need to do that. Uh, I am missing... Let's see here. All right, here is the back. Yeah, see this, this, this looks homemade to me, this filter and everything. So I think, I think that was probably done uh, by the original user. Um, this is the modem connector, which seems to be a bit askew. There we go. That looks good now. So that's the, that's the uh, modem. Uh, plug into your phone lines. Uh, Centronics uh, parallel port to to uh, two serial ports, and then there's this connector here, which is the keyboard connector. And the, I'm missing the cable, so I've got a cable on order. Um, RJ22 four wire, like your old handset on your uh, on your telephone. Um, brightness control for the CRT and uh, yeah that's where the foot went so yeah that just sheared off that just sheared off so replace that one just to probably just a new screw is all I need on this side we can see the CRT controller uh, the monitor here and uh, one modification I'll probably be making is to add a, uh, a VGA connector I can bring out uh, I can bring out video and put it on my screen capture card so we can look at uh, CPM and stuff on here I see a bunch of electrolytics on this board as well so we'll probably probably change those out so I think I'll do a lot of work on it before I before I power it up so the K-Pro design was a bit unusual I think um, it had some custom parts on it, and I'm not exactly sure how they accomplished those things, but like this is a, a custom part here that handles the uh, refresh of the dynamic RAM. And there's another, another custom part. Yeah, I think this is a custom part here, uh, which handles some IO stuff, maybe the video. Um, yeah, it's interesting. This is the later model, so the the uh, ROM is actually 64. It's a 2764. The early ones were 16s and 32s, but they finally ended up at 64. So uh, this part board number is an 81581, which doesn't sound familiar to me. I need to look in the documentation on what version that is. Probably something to do with the. Uh, Something to do with the modem included. Uh, the version of ROM is 81478A, 1984. There you go. So pretty new. Some people uh, sometimes replace this chip. This is the um, the graphics ROM, the uh, char character set, and you can burn and put in your own character set here. I believe. Uh, I believe this is static RAM for the uh, for the video. Uh, there is a PIO. Uh, not sure what this chip is. Not sure that chip is. But anyway, we'll go through all the schematics and everything as we fix this thing up and go through the design. Like I say, the design is a is is interesting. Yeah, I like it. <laughs>